Hey all, and welcome back to Fuzzy Dutchy Gaming and another video on the channel focusing on the Tornado Shot character that I leveled in the previous video. This is to really show you how to get your gear going for, I would say probably three divines should get you your gear and most of it Eldritch Implicits. So I'm going to go through kind of what gear to look for when you're buying, how to craft it, and then what Eldritch Implicits are mandatory and what are just nice to have. First thing I will say is have an idea of what your end goal is for each piece of gear and just have a look on trade first to see if it might be something that you can buy cheaper than crafting. But all I want to focus on is if you just want to craft the items yourself, which is probably going to be the cheapest way how to do it. So what we're going to look at is buying fractured items for basically every item other than the six link and the helmet because we have um, an enchantment on it. Everything else we're going to buy fractured items and they're fairly cheap. There's going to be a Google Doc along with this, which is going to show what the prices for these items were at the time of the video. But these fractured uh, mods aren't necessarily the only ones that will work. They're just ones that I think are beneficial. But if, for example, when this video comes out that, I don't know, the fractured amulet goes up from 5 chaos or 10 chaos to like 80 chaos, there's other mods that you can get fractured, anything that, that helps the build. The reason we're going for fractured items is we're going to use essences to guarantee one mod and if we've already got another mod that's guaranteed from the fracture it makes crafting decent items pretty cheap um so let's start with the bow first off this is a bow i've just purchased from trade for 15 chaos i was essentially looking for a spine bow with a half decent item level it doesn't have to be huge it pretty much just has to be over level 78 and i wanted t2 or above fractured cold or fire damage um, I found one for Fractured Cold Damage. It was 15 Chaos. And that's what I purchased. We're going to roll this with Essences later. Uh, for the Quiver, I wanted either Fractured Crit Multi or Fractured Projectile Speed, but it was quite expensive. So what I looked for instead was a Feathered Arrow Quiver because increased projectile speed is really important for um, Tornado Shot. And I went for increased Critical Strike Chance with both because that was kind of the cheapest Fracture um, available for the item i think it was five chaos this item and then it went up to like there was quite a lot for 10 and absolute ton for 15 but there's lots of things you could have on here like say you could have attack speed crit chance crit multi um le damage with attacks really high damage with bows really high flat damage there's tons of things that we can get on this quiver to guarantee on a fracture that's going to be fairly cheap We'll go through the two non-fractured items. So you just want a six link armor evasion base. General's Brigandine is probably the best one. This cost me six chaos and then I've just qualified it up. And then it's an armor or evasion or an armor evasion hybrid base with tornado shot fires and additional secondary projectile. It needs to be a half decent base. Don't go buying like the really low tier base that can only roll like a hundred armor. Um, because if you get bad pieces in all of your slots, you're going to have very little armor and evasion even with stuff like Determination and Grace. If these are too expensive, because they, there's not a huge supply of them, you can go for the Tornado Shot Critical Strike Chance, Tornado Shot Damage, any of those are fine. Additional secondary projectile helps with both single target and clear, but if it's going to cost you half of the budget of your build, it's not worth buying. You can always work towards this later, um, because all these items really are designed to be transition items. So the stuff you're going to use to get farming T16 maps then you're going to target each upgrade piece individually and say, right, I want this specific chest piece. It's going to cost me three divines. I'm going to farm till I've got it. Then I'm going to buy it and sell my old chest piece um, to another player. Both the rings, I was looking for fractured elemental damage with attacks, but it's quite expensive to get a decent roll. So what I thought would be good would actually get fractured. Um, is this T1? Yeah, fractured T1, all elemental resistances on any base that also gives elemental resistances. These rings were five chaos each, they're dirt cheap. They just mean that we're not gonna be tied down as much to trying to get resistances on gear. It could also be really handy to get something like strength on one of these because strength, because we're running determination, we need quite a high amount of strength. So that could also be something that you could look to roll um, on your rings. Uh, for the amulet, I've gone for all attributes. So I looked for basically 30 plus, and that's what I found one at 30. I think it was 15 chaos. And I went for an agate base. You could do something um, like an onyx amulet, but I think strength and intelligence is where we really need the help. So this makes more sense. 
this was fairly expensive at 20 chaos for a base it might be that if everyone buys these they go up to 50 or 60 c in that case you might want to switch it around and maybe look for something with really really high strength so maybe like 45 plus strength or 45 plus intelligence and we'll make up the rest on another piece of gear one thing to note is that you can roll catalysts on items and it will also change the fractured modifier because the way they work the way a catalyst will work is it doesn't really give you more stats it gives you basically a boost to the stats um so i've put um 10 intrinsic catalysts on this so it gives me 20 percent increased attributes but it doesn't actually push the attribute value up as you can stay that says at 30 what it does is it gives a bonus and adds it to it so just because an item's fractured it doesn't mean you can't modify that amount with um, the catalyst um, so we've done that for the amulet and then if we come to the belt i've also done it here with the attack modifiers i've scoured it which takes a fractured item to magic so it costs less of the um, catalyst it costs 10 instead of 20 if you were to do it on a rare item this item again i'm looking for a heavy belt with 40% plus elemental damage um, to attack skills. I think this belt was 20 chaos. There was some quite a bit cheaper, but I just didn't have any luck with responses. Again, if these go super, super high, you can look for something like a decent fractured life or a really high elemental resistance fracture. But this is what I've gone for because I think it worked out the best value for money um, for the build. Uh, the boots all you're really looking for is an evasion base with fractured 30 percent movement speed these cost me three chaos there was loads ranging from like three to seven chaos um, i bought these for three and then the gloves we're looking for fractured attack speed of 15 percent plus on a decent evasion base reason we've got evasion for the gloves is if we can roll spell suppression on it that's a pretty decent bonus for um, this build because it might save us some points on the tree uh, so these gloves were 20 chaos there were plenty for around that amount as well again if this goes up too high maybe look for fractured spell suppression like a fairly low roll or fractured life fractured hybrid evasion life loads of different things we're just trying to guarantee something that we're going to want on the final item and then we're going to target another one with an essence so we are going to want to put some eldritch implicits on to an item or two but we're going to leave that for now they are mandatory some of them in terms of we need to get ailment avoidance and stun avoid if you want to be capped on those but it's not necessarily something that's going to stop you from going and doing t16 maps it just makes it a lot more comfy but really the boots and the helmet have got the only craft that we really need to make the build feel nice um, so i would recommend spending the money to roll those or as i said before check trade before you do it because if you can get a finished pair of boots for say 80c it's going to be well worth doing but you're going to be looking for something like this so Chance to avoid elemental ailments, which we're going to roll with essences. Anything else you can get plus life. And then we're going for the ailment avoidance and the chance to avoid being stunned for our implicits. This is fine for now, but what we want is two blue, two green, and two red. Because it's an armor and evasion base, that should not take too long to roll that. Basically, keep rolling it until you see two blue sockets and then check um, the other sockets. Um, so we go that took 80 to 90 chromatics um, to roll that item so that's now ready to go so the only thing we're also going to do is anything with implicits where it's rolled quite low we're going to go and push these up a bit higher so that's rolled 23 out of 24 that's fine that's 15 we could push up to 16 if we really need to uh, that can definitely be pushed up from 25 uh, and that's it so we'll just go and use a few blessed orbs on these items um, for the projectile speed i'm looking for 28 plus There we go. And then for this, because we've only got a few left, maybe something like 27, 28, perfect. So stick these items back in and we are good to start crafting. What we're looking to do is essentially target something else that we want in the build, leaving us a suffix or a prefix to craft another mod that would be desirable. So for bows, I'll always use Essences of Dread because projectile speed is really really important to the build it's something that you can get on a bow but there's other mods that you rather have on a bow so if we can roll with either shrieking or deafening essences of dread we're gonna get a massive amount of projectile speed onto this quiver and um, so we use the deafening essences oh i need to actually put that to rare first so we'll go with the essences of dread 
So we've hit not a lot there. The cold damage is tier one, which is nice. Got the projectile speed, but then we don't really have anything else that's of, of use. What you'd really be looking for here is crit multi and life would be kind of the perfect role for this. So we're just going to keep going until we get something that's decent. Um, so this is rolled um, tier one life, but everything else on it is quite bad and it doesn't have a spare suffix because it's been taken up by the stun duration, which is a bit of a shame. So here we've got very bad attack speed, bad damage with bows, bad. So it's got good stats, but they're all bad rolls and it's not something I would want to settle for. So we go again, nothing there. That's got really low crit multi. So again, we'll skip that. So this one is probably something I would look to go with. It's roll T2 attack speed. We've got the increased projectile speed and we've got decent life so we can craft another prefix um, onto the item, which is really going to have to be a damage related one. Um, so we'll go over to our bench and see what we've got that we can roll on it. So Ellie damage with attack skills is probably going to be the best, but we'll just roll down and check other prefixes. These two are not too bad as well, the dual ones, but I think for the fact we can roll up to 32%, we're going to do elemental damage with attacks. Just for now, I'm going to leave it at 27%. So the quiver is now ready to go. So let's do the bonex because that's probably um, going to be the most expensive one to roll. What you're looking to do here, we want big lightning because it's going to be easier to proc Trinity if we've got a lot of lightning damage. So we're going to roll it with either deafening or shrieking essences of wrath. I've got tons because I've been farming essences. So I'm upgrading my wrath ones and we'll go with those. All we're looking to do is hit attack speed or crit chance with a suffix to craft the missing one. So this I wouldn't normally necessarily take as the attack speed is not brilliant, but I have hit fire damage as a secondary one and we could craft crit on that. The fire damage is not the worst roll in the world. It's cost me one essence so far to do it. Would I like a bit better attack speed? Yes, like this one's got 1.58, not a huge difference. The crit is going to be quite a big difference because you're going to have to bench craft it, but that is a pretty decent roll for one essence. So this bow in total is going to cost me about 22 chaos. Um, so we'll go down to critical strike chance. Obviously we rolled the lowest one, but for now we'll just keep it. So we're now looking at the body armor. So for this body armor, we just need an open prefix because we're going to want to craft um, element avoidance. So the most straightforward thing to do would be to use essences of greed. I'm going to use Shrieking because for the extra 10 life, I don't think it's worth the money using Deafening. Again, I've farmed an absolute ton of essences in lower tier maps. So I've got plenty of essences I can use, but these are not particularly expensive to buy. They'll be like one to one and a half chaos. Um, if you bought a small amount, maybe two chaos if you wanted to buy like 30 or 40 uh, in bulk. So what we're going to do is we're going to roll this until we get something we like with an open prefix. So that is Junk. That's got some suppression, some cold resistance, and it does have a prefix. So this would be an option for me for uh, the chest as is, because even though the spell suppression is not massive, it is actually something that helps the build. We're going to end up putting Eldritch Implicits on this chest so we can always recraft it later. Um, but I'm happy with that for the chest. It's rolled a low hybrid life. It's got the life from the essence. It's got really high cold resistance T1. And then it's got chance to suppress spell damage at tier four. And that's quite hard to roll on an armor evasion chest. So I'm going to say I'm happy with that. We're going to go over to the crafting bench and we're going to do ailments. Now, these don't really have to be a particular roll. So whatever rolls is absolutely fine uh, and it rolled really well. So chest is done. On to the next item. So this is where we want to get some stun avoidance into the build. Now, this is one of the items we couldn't get fractured because we needed an enchantment on it. The chances of getting a cheap item with an enchantment and a decent fracture is very, very low. So these we're going to do Essences of Scorn, which is chance to avoid being stunned. These aren't particularly expensive. So if you want to make your life easy, I would use Deafening. Other than that, go for Shrieking. These will not be more than one Chaos each uh, in bulk. So I've got two Deafening. So we'll just see if we can get anything with that. We've rolled Live. Armor, chance of avoid being stunned, and lightning resistance with a suffix. So I will probably keep that because I can maybe. Actually, the chance of avoid being stunned is rubbish, so I'm not going to keep that. So here we don't have any suffixes. We've hit some intelligence, life, life, and armor. So it's not terrible, but it's not great. So I'm just going to go and roll shriekings over this until we get something that I'm more happy with. 
Uh, tier 10 life, definitely not happy with that. That looks bad again. Remember, you could craft up to 70% life um, on an item. So if you hit something with maybe big intelligence or big strength, it might be worth keeping. Um, so that's got strength, but it's not really got anything else um, that's going to do us any favors. Let's say these essences are cheap, so don't worry about using um, a few of these. We don't have space to craft life on that. That's garbage. That's got terrible life. That's not very good either. No. So we've hit some light and resistance and intelligence, which could actually help. Got chance to avoid being stunned. We've got life and hybrid life that push life up to something acceptable. Um, and then we could also craft a prefix on there if I wanted to. Do I think that's good enough? No, because I can craft better life than that with the bench and with a few alchemy orbs. So we'll go again. Um, so we're getting a bit unlucky here because we keep rolling um, a low life roll. Uh, this has got the lightning resistance again, chance to avoid being stunned, and it's got hybrid armor and life. So we can actually craft some life on this, and I'm happy with that item for now. Um, so we'll go over here. Uh, 67, we'll keep that. And then that's the helmet finished. Um, so on we go again. The belt is easy enough. We're going to use any of the resistance. Um, essences again it doesn't have to be deafening shrieking is fine you're looking for life on here because life craft on a belt is quite rubbish um, I would settle for t1 chaos and uh, prefix to craft life that would also be decent um, but at the moment these again are going to be dirt cheap so I'm just going to keep using these until it's something good that is perfectly acceptable the flask charges gained is not too bad actually 33% that's actually a pretty good mod to have we've hit fire we've hit cold we've hit a half decent life roll we've got our fractured early damage roll we can then put a prefix on it which on belts i don't think there's very much but let's have a look uh, mana's never a bad thing but i think we're going to go for 214 to 285 armor and evasion that's a very nice stat to have because we're going to be running bros both grace and determination so that is now done so we're going to put that in here what we're doing here is looking for our avoid ailments 26 to 30 percent is going to be enough um, for this so we're going to be using shrieking essences of loathing we've already got our movement speed so what we're looking for is anything decent with an open prefix to craft life or a decent life roll um, so there we've hit some lightning resistance standard block recovery is not very good so in all honesty i'm probably going to roll over this because i think i can get better um, it'd be really good if we can hit something like spell suppression. Just going to go DND. Now, these essences are probably a bit more expensive, so don't be too greedy about what you're looking for um, on here. I'm thinking now I probably should have took what I got given before. Um, so here we've got cold resistance, very low elemental element roll. Now, again, I think I can do better than that. I could do better than that. So here we've hit. Um, a very low evasion stun and block recovery, which is absolutely nothing for the build. Hit chance avoid ailments, and we've hit some fire resistance. So this is not ideal, but remember, we're looking for like a starter set of gear. So I'm going to say that's fine. So we're going to go over, we're going to craft life. And then we're going to be done with that item. This is one we are going to want to do some implicits on, which we'll come on to. So then we've got gloves and then we have these items here. Now, one thing I think we're going to struggle with is strength. So I actually want to roll strength on some of these items. So it's probably going to be one of the jewelry items. I do it. Um, so actually, let's leave the gloves till last because then we'll know what resistances we've got to play around with. Um, so for these, we've got all our attribute modifiers on it already. So again, I'm just going to regal these up so I can use an essence on them. On here, you've got a few choices for the amulet. You can either go crit or you can go for flat damage. I personally would go for crit on this because we are missing crit multi on all of our gear. So we're going to go over to Essences of Scorn, which are going to be crit multiplier. Again, shrieking is absolutely fine. And we're going to roll this looking for something half decent. Um, so that is terrible. That's bad. That is not the worst I've ever seen, and it has got a prefix. So this has got... The crit multi that we've rolled from the essence, it's got increased elemental damage with attack skills. It's got some mana, which is not too bad. 
mana regen's absolutely garbage. So this isn't brilliant, but it will, again, it will do. Um, so I'm going to go and craft life on this, and we'll call that a day. So we now have our rings to do. So we're happy with our amulet. So we'll put that back in our stash. We'll pull our gloves through so we're ready to go. Now rings, we've got a decision to make. I think we're going to need some strength. So I'm actually going to craft one ring with Essences of Rage. Shrieking, again, absolutely fine. We don't need to go any higher than that. Um, so we'll go with the two stone ring. So here, it would have been nice to get some damage, but we've hit T2 Chaos Resistance. It's actually probably quite helpful. Got Rarity, which helps a little bit, I suppose. Um, you've got a choice of what you do with this. I would be tempted to craft life on this, and we'll go for damage on the other ring. It does mean that we've wasted our attribute modifiers, but it costs 5C to put that on the item. It's not the end of the world. Um, we'll just get that a bit higher. So 50, so that's one ring. So we've now got our strength sorted out. What we ideally need now is life and damage and an open prefix. So what we're looking for is minus mana cost of skills. We're going to need it on an item 100%. Because if you look at my character here, I've got it on two items and I've got uh, minus mana cost on the helmet and it makes it feel super comfy in terms of um, mana. I think we could lose one of the mana crafts and we should still be okay. Um, so that's what we're going to aim for. So we're going to go into our essences. We are going to go with some damage essences for this one. So I'm probably going to go deafening because these are cheap. I want lightning. So we're going to upgrade these and we're going to roll deafening essences of torment. And again, what we're looking for, and to be honest, I'd probably sacrifice not having life if it rolled really well. Um, so we're rolling with lightning damage. And we're looking for something else that's decent on the build at the moment. We're not really hitting anything that's any good whatsoever. Again, nothing good there. We haven't got an open prefix there because we're all mana and another damage. And then if this fails, we're going to have to go and roll a different um, essence. Uh, that fire damage looks quite low, doesn't it? Yep, tier four. It's got, oh, it's got mana as well, so it doesn't help. Okay, so we've lost our Essences of Torment, so we're going to go in to use um, another Essence type. Uh, so we can go and we can use Suffering, because that again is cold damage um, to attacks. And this is again going to get boosted up by our um, uh, Catalyst. So that is no good whatsoever. That is also terrible. That is terrible. That is terrible. So this is okay. Um, we've hit T1 cold damage. Oh no, sorry, we're rolling with cold damage. So we've hit strength, but we've already got our strength. So we're actually going to roll over that. Uh, it doesn't help us that much. Uh, this one is decent, but again, we've filled the prefixes and we actually need those prefixes, which is a bit of a shame. Uh, we've got attack speed on that, but we've filled the prefixes again. So here we've got an open prefix, but we've hit really bad lightning damage to attack, so it's not worth keeping. Hit even worse lightning damage to attacks. Hit some life that's not very good. And so here again, we don't have the prefix because it's, it's unfortunately put mana in there. So this is where it can get expensive, but the essences aren't a lot at all. So here's one I'd be happy with. We've got T2 lightning damage, T1 cold damage, all early resistances, bit of fire resistance. I'm just going to craft minus mana cost on here and I'm going to be done with it. And what I might do is if it turns out to not be that smooth is I can always replace um, the life craft on either the amulet or the other ring um, to add the non-channeling in as well. Um, so we really want seven there. There we go. So that's our other ring done. So what we'll do now, and I've only got one item left to craft, which is the gloves. We're going to put all our gear on. Uh, so we've got our fractured attack speed gloves. What do we need in terms of defenses? We need some cold resistance and we need some lightning resistance. Um, but we're kind of where we want to be with our gear. Everything is um, in place. So let's go and craft this. So because we know we need probably 
lightning resistance more than cold is we will go and roll this with lightning resistance essences which unfortunately i crafted all mine up so i'm gonna to have to use deafening don't use deafening on it it's a waste of money <laughs> um and then we're going to look for something else so i believe it was lightning and cold that we needed so what we're looking for is lightning and life or lightning and cold with space to craft life um shame that life was terrible don't have that because it's unfortunately give us dexterity let's give us dexterity again uh, that's full of suffixes as well. That's no good. So that would be fine. So we've got life, we've got increased evasion, we've got our attack speed, we've got our lightning resistance, and then we're going to go and craft cold resistance. And that's our gear finished other than our Eldritch Implicit. So we'll go and put cold resistance on it. Okay, so we need an anointment for this amulet, which is going to be crystal skin. Um, so we'll quickly have a look um, at what that is. And it is silver, black, and sepia. Um, so you're also looking for a brutal restraint. To make your Eldritch Implicits cheaper, you ideally want Onslaught on Kill and 20% chance to avoid stuns. That means when we're crafting to get stun immune, it's much easier to do because you're not going to have to roll um, the Implicit on your boots. Um, this doesn't have it. Um, I bought this for 20 to 30 C. The reason I kept it is because it's got a lot of crit strike chance. It's got some life. That everything on this is good. It's got attack speed. And these onslaughts stack. So I have this twice. So what happens is when I kill um, an enemy, I get onslaught for eight seconds on kill. And I get it twice. And it adds up to 16 seconds. You don't need any more than eight um, for mapping. There's no way you're going to go more than eight seconds without killing an enemy. But it helps maybe for map bosses where you go into the boss, your onslaught starts ticking down. And when you've already got 16 seconds when you get the buff, it can help a little bit um, on bosses. Um, so what we're going to do now is just go over our defenses to see what we need. So I know I need to anoint crystal skin. So if we go and look at our freeze, avoid and shock avoid, we're at 70% for each. And then our stun resistance, if I can find it, is 89%. So if I had it on my lethal pride, I would be done with stuns and I wouldn't need to roll the Eldritch implicit um, because we get everything else from the tree and from the gear. Um, so I'm looking for 30% more avoidance, and at the moment I have 27 on my boots. So back to the matter in hand, I'm going to go and buy these um, oils, and I'll be right back with you. Okay, so I've picked up my oils, so we'll go and anoint our amulet, which is that, is it? No, it's not that, is it that? There we go. So anoint crystal skin, so that gives us more ailment avoidance. Um, so we're now at 90% and 89% stun. What that means, unfortunately, is I need to roll the rest as Eldritch Implicit. Um, so let's see if we've even got any currency. We've got a little bit floating around. On this, you just need lessers. You do not need to go for any more. Um, so what we'll do, just to double check I know what I'm going for, is bring up Craft of Exile uh, and look at what the orbs roll. I think it's Eater for Elemental Ailments, and then I think it's Exarch for the Stun, but we'll just double check. Uh, get rid of all those because I don't need that. Okay, so we'll just quickly go down here to the Exarch mods. Chance of avoid being stunned, yeah, is Seer and Exarch, which means the other one has to be um, each of Worlds, Elemental Elements. We only need the bottom one because we're quite close to being capped anyway. As I say, this is where it can get expensive, which is why I say look at what you can get um, on the market if you have to roll these. There we go. So we've got 19%. That's fine. Then we're going to go and look for stun on the other one. Brittle ground would be nice, but um, unfortunately we need the stun because it feels much better mapping. Okay, so there's our mod sorted. So if we now go to defenses, we have capped resistances. Chaos resistance is an issue, but it's something we can fix when we look to improve our gear. I didn't want to go spend it too much. We've got stun avoidance, 106%, and then 109 for all our Ellie almond avoidances. The only other thing I'll make sure you're doing your character, because I'm going to be doing Exarch maps, is uh, Burning Ground. So this is the gear that we're going to go and now see how it performs in a T16 map. I'm not worried about doing the rest of the implicits yet, other than possibly the helmet, because not having the mana cost might be an issue. But what I might do to get around it 
is just get rid of the in fact we'll do it we'll get rid of the lifecraft on the amulet for now because i don't want to have to roll more implicits um and we're going to go for this obviously i rolled six again but we'll leave it as it is it should be fine um so i'm just going to swap all my gems into this gear get all the colors sorted and links and stuff um, and i'll be back with you um so what we're going to do is we're going to go and run our freshly geared character in through a t16 map so we'll go and get this to at least a build that i can run any damage we can at the moment uh, i'm running out of scours um so obviously it's going to give me early damage and we haven't got any chance orbs either um so consecrated ground not ideal unique boss no so this is absolutely fine we'll just check for sextants and we'll stick some on because i don't want to make it that i'm kind of cheating so fizz i'm not doing because of the bubbles um is that worth money he is not worth any money um so we'll just roll over it Uh, is that worth anything? Doubt it. Nope, not really. And then convert when killed, which I'm assuming is not worth anything either. No. Okay, cool. So they will do. Um, so we'll just go and do a quick showcase on this character. And then we can finally close out this long video. Um, but a lot of people have been asking about crafting. So I wanted to make sure that people kind of get a full understanding of how to get your budget gear going. This should easily be doable for sort of four divines without a problem. And I'm hoping... <laughs> This is going to be fine to farm um, some T60 mats with, but we're about to find out. Uh, the POB is going to be in the description because I take quite a specific tree to make use of uh, charges on kill. Oh good, there's a harvest, which is going to be a good uh, demonstration. Excuse the bad PC. I don't know why, but whenever I do Eldritch maps, the first time I run one, it's absolutely garbage performance. Uh, so I don't know if the Consecrated Ground is going to cause issues for Harvest. It might do, but we'll find out. Um, so we'll go and do... Are these both purple? They are. So we'll do this one here. Uh, we're just going to do a couple more of those. And then the idea from here would be that you farm up um, your gear bit by bit. Aim for whatever you want to target. Yeah, so the Consecrated Ground is causing me issues on this. But we got it done eventually. <laughs> So we'll go and finish this plot because every bit of harvest is worth money. And then we'll go and finish the map. Have I not got harvest on my tree? It seems like I should have an extra plot there. I do have harvest on my tree. Okay. Uh, so again, we'll go for this one because it's got the T3 beast in it. But the only thing I don't like about this build is that we don't have any phasing, which kind of sucks. Okay, so I think we're done there. So we'll just go and... I won't finish the map. We'll just go and do a bit of a clear and then we'll go and do the boss. Single target is going to be lacking, I think. And obviously we've got our stunner void so we don't get done by the arcane buffer. Um, so we'll just go through. Boss should be up here. Obviously he's corrupted, so we're going to have to move out of the way. Because if he double slams me, we're probably going to die. But now we should be fine. Okay, job done. And he dropped nothing. Um, but that kind of worked okay. It was how I expected the build to perform. It's going to be capable. 
um, of doing it. I'm still farming up my XP, so I'll be getting to level 92 soon. And this is kind of the stage of the build where I'm at, at the moment with my gear. So I'm going to farm this some more. I'll be streaming um, a few times over the next week with this character if people wanted to drop by Twitch um, and have a look to see how it's going. But really from here, you're then looking to target specific gear. So if you decided you wanted a plus one arrow quiver or a decent plus one plus two bow, work out how much that's going to cost to either craft or buy, and then farm whatever your preferred Atlas passives are to do that. Um, so that's it for this video. I know it was a really long one, but I just wanted to give people an understanding of exactly how to get the build going if you are literally leveling the build from scratch. That's it for this one. Hope it's helpful. Thanks for watching. Take care. See you in the next one.